Do you ever feel that YouTube guides aren't in-depth enough? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a solution for you, and it is GameLeap. GameLeap is an educational video platform that helps you get the most out of Dota. Each hero is cleverly devised into special courses with lots of videos, which help you master all the finer points of how to play a player really well. And it's done by 7K plus MMR players. And don't forget, if you sign up for GameLeap, not only does it help you win more and get your MMR up, it also supports my channel. Hello guys, this is ZXYC here, and today we're going to be talking about the ability breakdown and skill usage for Lina. Lina's first ability is Dragon Slave. It is a targeted AoE damaging spell. So what it does is when you target it anywhere, it shoots a fire dragon in a straight line and it deals damage in that line. But just remember this has a huge cast range, but it does go further than the cast range. So its cast range is 800, but let's just say for example you hit click it on the floor, the dragon will travel 1200 no matter where you click it. So that means that you can actually hit units outside of your cast range. So if you click on someone and your Lena is a bit too far, let's just say 900 away, where you can't cast it on them, by clicking on the floor, she'll be able to cast it and it'll still hit them at 1200 away. Also remember that with your talent, this even gets further due to the fact that she has a plus 125 cast range, so it becomes even like 1400 away. So this is going to be your go-to move in terms of nuking waves or in terms of trying to get those heroes that are a little bit out of reach. Because a 1400 range nuke is ridiculous, especially with its cooldown. So this is definitely going to be the skill that you're going to be using throughout the game constantly to harass people or to farm waves or anything like that. So when it comes to actually using this ability, so like I said, there's two different ways. There's clicking on the floor or there's clicking on the hero. If you click on the hero, of course, if they're not like a fast moving hero, especially in the early game when they just have no boots at all, clicking on them will almost always get it off. You'll actually end up hitting it every time. But as the heroes start getting faster and faster, or especially if you want to aim at two heroes at once, so if there's two heroes that are kind of split up and you want to hit both of them, you can kind of click in the middle on the floor to hit both of them. So use your best discretion on when to click on the floor, when to click on a hero. But generally speaking, clicking on the floor is better because the spell will always go off no matter what and it will always go off the way you want it to go off. So one example of this is let's just say you're in mid lane. You don't have an observer word on the cliff, but you know the general location of the hero against you. You would click it on the floor in such a way where you'd get that last hit on the creep, but it still go in the direction that you think they are. Of course, you wouldn't be able to do this if you can click it on them or anything like that. So that's why clicking on the floor is a lot better. Another reason for this is if you're against a hero like Rikamaru, who's about to go invis, if you try to click on them and they go invis, it'll cancel that animation and it'll stop casting it and they'll get away. But if you click on the floor, no matter what, even if they go invisible, of course, you can still get the spell off, end up getting the kill or whatever. So, in conclusion, of course there's two ways to cast a spell, but generally speaking, as you play more and more Lina, you generally want to be clicking on the floor because it's just a better way to cast it. You're in full control of how it will end up being cast. Lina's second ability is Light Strike Array. This is an AoE spell, so whenever you cast it, there is a short delay of about half a second, and then after that half a second, it will land on the floor, dealing damage and stunning everyone in the AoE. It is actually a very good stun, it goes up as you level it up to 2.5, it deals moderate damage, but this is the reason why Lina is so powerful. She has an AoE, very strong spell, with only a 7 second cooldown, it's a very 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 powerful ability. And remember that Light Strike Array does destroy trees, so you can use it to get into a better position in the tree line, you can use it to find heroes that are trying to juke in a tree line, just stunning in there, you'll find them, breaking all the trees, you'll get vision. Even heroes against Monkey King, you can just simply just stun the tree that you think he's at. If you get him, guess what? He's stunned for 4 seconds and ends up in pretty easy kill. You can even use multiple of these in the mid and late game. You can use them in succession, cutting along a tree line and getting really deep in an area where enemies don't really even expect you to be in the first place. Just remember, with the delay, of course, if an enemy is really fast especially, it will start to get harder and harder to cast a spell. But generally speaking, it's not the worst because people's movements half the time are forced based on your positioning, based on your team's positioning, and you can just go for it. My recommendation for this ability, especially for newer Lena players, is to just cast it. Don't hesitate too much with it. The more you hesitate, the higher chance you have of actually missing it. Just cast it, just go for it, and you'll see that it'll work out more often than not. So Light Strike Array does have a fairly short cast range. It's not the worst, but it's also not the best. It is AoE, so it's not too bad in general, but keep that in mind. You will have to come a lot closer than you'd like to to cast this spell. Once you start getting the talent at level 10, the cast range ability, of course it does get a lot, lot easier to hit these stuns. 
but in general, especially at level 1 to 9, but keep that in mind that it does have a fairly short cast range, and you will have to come pretty close to get the spell off on enemy heroes. Fiery Souls is Lina's third ability. It is a passive ability. So what it does is every time you cast a spell, it adds a stack. And what these stacks do is they give you bonus movement speed and bonus attack speed. You can have up to three stacks up. So whenever you cast a spell, it adds a stack and it refreshes the duration, which is 10 seconds. So I cast a spell, I have one stack of uh, movement speed and attack speed. I cast another one, I have now 10 more seconds with two stacks. I cast another one, I have three stacks. Then of course that's the cap at three stacks. If I cast another one, it will keep it at three stacks and it will refresh the stack duration to 10 seconds. So what you want to do with this spell, of course in the early game uh, you won't have enough mana to keep spamming spells. So you'll only get this buff when you're actually using spells and of course the movement speed and the attack speed will help you finish off targets that you're going on or will help you finish off creep waves or whatever it is that you're trying to kill. But as the game progresses, this ability becomes very powerful due to the fact that you'll have enough mana pool to actually just spam spells even though there's nothing going around around the map just to keep that stack duration at 3 and of course with the 3 stack duration you start running really fast and you're constantly attacking fast and you'll start seeing Lina running at like 500 movement speed throughout the whole game which is always a nice thing for her so this is definitely a very very strong ability for her which is really what helps her transition really well into a semi core in the mid and late game also remember that Lina has a very good low base attack speed so with all this attack speed buffing she ends up attacking very, very, very fast, especially in the mid and late game. Her base attack speed is 1.6, very strong. And lastly, there is a talent at level 25, which makes this ability even better. So it helps Lina even more in terms of transitioning into a semi-core. Of course, level 25 is a long way to go for support, but that's always there as an option. Laguna Blade is Lina's ultimate. It is a single target ability, and what it does is when you cast it on an enemy, it just shoots this very strong single target dealing a nuke. All it does is just straight up nuke them for a lot of damage. So Laguna Blade does have a pretty bad cast animation and it has a pretty bad cast range. So what ends up happening is you have to come fairly close to cast it. I mean it's not too bad compared to other spells. But all it does is yeah, deal moderate damage and of course it's, it's just a magical damage. So it can be dodged with BKB or anything like that. So Laguna does have an Aghanim's upgrade. And what it does, it makes Laguna Blade deal pure damage and pierce magic immunity. So even against stuff like BKB or Repel or Nyx Rage or any of these spell immunity abilities, you can Laguna Blade them and it will pierce right through it, dealing pure damage and dealing its damage. Just remember, Laguna Blade does have a fairly short cooldown, but a really, really large mana cost. You'll have it up almost every time an engagement starts, but with this high mana cost, you have to manage your mana better. Of course, it's very expensive, and it has a very large backswing, so make sure to cancel it. Lastly, it does have an effect delay of 0.25 seconds. Now, what this means, what this effect delay means, is that when the spell is actually cast itself, you'll see it actually hit the target, but a quarter of a second later is when it actually triggers its damage. So what this means is you can actually Laguna someone, your mana cost will be used, and your cooldown will start going down, so you already use the spell, quarter of a second later is when it actually will deal its damage but if someone gets banished by an OD or something like that within that quarter of a second what ends up happening is you lose your cooldown you lose your mana cost but the damage wasn't done because of that effect delay that it has that quarter of a second so it actually is a really big factor a lot of people can actually end up dodging your ability with this even something like BKB they can see you like casting Laguna like you're doing Laguna and as you're Lagooning them they can BKB and then your Laguna will still go off but the damage won't Due to the fact that it has a longer cast animation, due to the fact that it has a long effect delay, these two in conjunction with one another actually makes it take a quite a while for it to actually take its effect. So a lot of players can actually BKB in time when they see you about to Laguna them and can dodge the effect. Also something like the support Shadow Demon can bench their ally in time, stopping the damage. So that's one of its biggest weaknesses, is it's very easy to dodge the actual damage while still forcing the cooldown and the mana cost. So do remember that Lina does have very long backswing animations on all her spells. Her Q, her W, and her R all have a very long animation that you make sure you always have to cancel, simply canceling by just giving her another command as soon as you cast a spell. All her spells also do have a moderately long cast point, so that's one of her bigger weaknesses. So you have to make sure that you're in a decent position when casting a spell, because it's going to take you about half a second to cast any of her spells. 
So when it comes to using uh, Light Strike Array, the best time to use this is when you have a follow-up from another hero, another setup stun that you can then follow up with Light Strike Array. Heroes like Axe or Magnus, of course, they have an AOE ability that holds everyone together, then you can Light Strike Array on top. Anything like as simple as some maybe Avenger or Sven stun, you can follow it up with this ability. You can always, of course, just get the stun off yourself if you're also in the right position especially if you have the cast range ability it starts to get pretty far from how far you can cast it even with lens and your cast range ability you can cast it from very very far and hit people like a thousand range away you can also combo your own items with this ability stuff like yules even rod of atos just to hold the enemy down and then lets you get a good light strike array if you're using yules of course if you're not familiar with the feel i would suggest going into a lobby and practicing for a bit you can use that enemy and then try to time your light strike array in such a way where they can't really get away unless they have an instant ability. So something like a puck, of course, don't try to time it against the puck or anything like that. But general rule of thumb that I think is good is if you can stun a storm, then you're good. Because if you can stun a storm before he zips out, then that means your timing is correct. Because that is a long enough cast point on a spell where I feel like he shouldn't get away from you. BKBs, anything like that, will always, always be dodged. Of course, if they BKB, you'll never be able to light strike array them, but you force the BKB, so that's fine. So, for Dragon Slave and Light Strike Array in combination with one another, to farm a Creep Wave, if they're both level 4, and of course, you did not get the plus 80 talent, if you did get the plus 80, then they both just together will kill a Creep Wave. If you did not, make sure you hit each Creep once, then cast them both together, end up taking that Creep Wave. So with Dragon Slave, you're probably going to be using this more, let's just say in the early stages, you'll be using it to zone. If the offlaner is really far, you'll just Dragon Slave them and walk away. If they're like spacing really far back, if they're walking up to you and being more annoying, of course you'll stun them, hit them a couple times, Dragon Slave them, etc. If you're at level 4 and you already have your passive, then just try to cast the Dragon Slave as early as possible. So cast both and then you'll have that attack speed so you can hit longer. So when it comes to uh, combinations, let's just say you duels and then stun someone, try to cast all your spells right away in succession. This way you're canceling the backswing of each one with your next spell. So you do Light Strike Array, Dragon Slave, Laguna, like that, right away. And as soon as the Laguna hits, start right-clicking them to cancel that long, long backswing. And that way you cast it all through your spells as fast as you possibly could. And you're doing your right-click. Your right-click is going to be dealing a lot of damage due to your Fiery Soul. So do remember, especially if you're newer with Lina, I did recommend that you don't hesitate with Light Strike Array, just cast it, don't think about it too much, because the longer you think about it, the more you give your opponent a chance to get to try to dodge it. But if you're a more advanced Lina player, then of course you're going to be more familiar with this spell and you're going to be more comfortable with trying to hit it. So at this point, you can start pressing S to cancel the animation, to fake the enemy into thinking that you're going to throw your stun and forcing their movements, forcing things that they don't want to do. So what you would do traditionally is, let's just say, especially in the mid lane, you can just simply just pretend to throw a stun every time an enemy hero, especially a melee hero, let's just say it's walking up to try to get a stun. Let's just say an enemy hero is trying to walk up to get a creep. What you can do is you can just pretend to light strike array, making them go back, and then maybe denying that creep, stuff like that. When it comes to using this ability, if you're less familiar with it, if you're not comfortable with it yet, I say you just go for it. But if you get more and more comfortable with it, you can start canceling the animation and faking out your, your opponent, stuff like that. So as always, thanks for watching, please leave a comment below, and in our next video we're going to be talking about the early game of Lena.